go really quickly over the axial resolution formula. I want to go over this uh, specifically because I've had two or three questions in the past few days over this very specific formula. And as I was talking to other students, I realized that there's one little thing that trips people up and makes you assume the relationships are one way where they actually are another way. So if we quickly look at what the formula is, you can see it here. We have our axial resolution is equal to one half of the spatial pulse length. Generally, I teach you to write your formulas in the way I have here in the triangle. If you have one thing multiplying another, you write the fraction, basically whatever's on top goes in the top of the pyramid, whatever's on the bottom goes on the bottom of the pyramid, and then whatever that fraction equals will go on the other side of the bottom of the pyramid. So you can see that our axial resolution will equal our spatial pulse length over two, which is the same as saying one half of the spatial pulse length. You can quickly solve for this. Let's say you want to solve for the spatial pulse length. Well, it'll be the axial resolution multiplied by two. Basically, that's the reason I write it this way. You just put your finger over the value you want to solve for, and it'll tell you. You could also solve for 2, and it would just be the spatial pulse length over your axial resolution. But in this one, it doesn't matter. But there's other uh, formulas with multiple variables, and you could solve for any of them. So let's get into why this one seems so complicated. So the top of the pyramid and the bottom of either side will be related. And we can look at it like this. If our spatial pulse length goes up, our axial resolution, I'm going to say that it's going to go up. And this is what gets everybody confused. And we'll, we'll hash this out and why this happens. Generally, when you write a formula like this, whatever's on the top and whatever's on the bottom, if one goes up, the other one goes up. They're going to be directly related. Let's do a quick example with just some simple math so you can see how that works. So let's write a formula. We won't necessarily write the axial formula yet. The one I like to show is usually like the intensity formula. It's I equals P over an area. So if we have our intensity here, our power goes on top because it's on top of the fraction. And our areas over here. If our intensity goes up, we can say that our power is going up. So if our power goes up, our intensity is going to go up. And that's assuming that the area stays the same. If our area goes up, remember that power over a, a space of area, our intensity will have to go down. And likewise, if our area goes down, if we focus on a smaller area, our intensity will go up. If our power goes up, over the same area, our intensity has to go up. So we see that whatever's on the top and whatever's on the bottom on this side will, will, will both increase. If our intensity stays the same, and our, if the intensity stays the same and our power increases, it has to be over a larger area. So you see how whatever's on the top will, will be directly related to whatever's on the bottom as long as the other variable stays the same. And the way all the questions on the exam are, they will only change. One of the values will always stay the same. So let's look at why the axial resolution works the way it does. If we have our spatial pulse length here and our axial resolution, and it's times two, let's just look at why this one goes up and this one goes up because they don't feel like they should be directly related and this is the question will be like does your resolution increase if the spatial pulse length increases so if you remember what our, our resolution is if our beam is coming down this way and it's looking at some dots that are next to each other if the beam is longer than the distance between those two dots it will see those dots as one single structure. But if we, have our, if we have our dots, let's say we have a dot here and a dot way down here, 
and our beam is little, our spatial pulse length is short, we will actually see two separate structures. So our resolution is better with a shorter pulse length. And even just think about spatial pulse length, the space that the, the pulse takes, the length of the space of the pulse. How long is that pulse? And again, if we have a if we have a short wavelength versus a long wavelength, our pulse length will correspond with that. So here's where it gets confusing. If our spatial pulse length, let's say it started out as this, you know, high frequency, short wavelength, and we increase our spatial pulse length, we increase our wavelength, now it's this, and we're trying to resolve these structures, the short wavelength will resolve those two structures, where the long wavelength will only see one. So this is the biggest confusing part. The spatial pulse length increases. The axial resolution, why does that go up? It's because this is measured in millimeters. And this is millimeters. So if our spatial pulse length, let's say it's five millimeters, and that's an exaggerated number. Let's say it's five millimeters and it increases to 10 millimeters, it doubled. Our axial resolution will also increase in millimeters in length, which we, we see over here, if, it's, if the spatial pulse length is higher, our, our number value for axial resolution increases, but it's worse axial resolution. So even though our number increases, our actual resolution is worse. That's why we see an increase in spatial pulse length gives us worse axial resolution. But this formula is confusing because we get those millimeters on both sides and we see them both increase. And it looks like the spatial pulse length increases and the axial resolution increases. It doesn't. The actual number value increases. And that gives us worse axial resolution. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. If you have any questions, of course, um, you can email me and I'll try to clarify. But I, I know that this gets a lot of people and they get tripped up on that because it looks like they're directly related, but they're not. Spatial pulse length increases. Your actual resolution, the, the ability to resolve two separate structures in a line goes down because the number goes up. All right, take care.